Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. Today we're going to talk about the top 5 reasons why you should consider ditching Windows for a Linux distribution. So, that being said, let's dig right in. Alright, so number 5. The fifth reason why you should consider ditching Windows for Linux is that it is lightweight and unbloated. It's no secret that over time, Microsoft has added more and more and more cruft to Windows. It's getting honestly kind of ridiculous. And also, keep in mind with Windows, they're adding a new layer on top of it every time they release a new version. Like, there are some instances where you see a window loading, and it has the Aereo, like, Windows 7, Windows Vista era title bars and window borders. Like, all that stuff is still under the surface. Like, Windows is so ridiculously bloated that you have to spend an hour cleaning out all the cruft and stripping it down to just what you need, and then you get to spend another hour installing everything you need. The difference with Linux distributions is that they often come with a very minimal set of packages. So on Windows, you spend two hours getting it set up. On Linux, you spend one hour setting it up, just installing everything you need. So, at the end of the day, uh, you're going to save a lot of time by going with the Linux distribution. Alright, reason number four. Linux is simple. Like, I know that, so there's, there's a misconception, right? A lot of people think that Linux is a really complicated operating system. They think that it involves a lot of terminal commands and knowledge of scripting, which to some extent that is true. But for the basic user, someone who just needs a web browser, a music player, an office suite, maybe a little video editing, it's honestly pretty dang simple. And even when you get down into the layers underneath the graphical interface, it's still quite simple. See, with Linux, there's a permeating logic that goes through every facet of the system. And yes, you do have to spend some time figuring out what that logic is and getting used to it, but you have to do the same thing with Windows anyway, right? People perceive Windows as, more, as easier than Linux just because they're used to Windows. Like, I can't count the number of times I've had to go in and edit the registry on Windows or use the local group policy editor, and compared to Linux, I've never had to do any of that. So, honestly, Windows is more complicated than Linux. It's just the fact that you're used to it, and if you get used to the simple logic of Linux, you're going to have a much easier time than you would with Windows. Alright, reason number three. It isn't overbearing with updates. Uh, so, you know, every time I sit down and try to use a Windows computer, it's like, alright mate, we gotta update. It's like, come on, come on. I'm just trying to use my fucking computer. But no, no, you don't get to use your computer. You have to run this mandatory update, and it's going to take an hour. Like, all right, so that's on the extreme end of things, but I've literally had situations where I sit down in my bedroom, I open my laptop that's running Windows, and as soon as I turn it on, it's like, all right, mate, we're rebooting for updates. <laughs> it's like, uh, and then it takes an hour, and this has happened multiple times on decent hardware, well-supported, decent hardware. It's just ridiculous. Like, Windows updates always get in the way of me using the computer to get something done. Linux, on the other hand, the updates can happen in the background, and they're quick, they're not taxing in terms of the resources used. You can update everything all at once, which is really nice. And all you have to do is a quick reboot, and that reboot doesn't take any longer than any other reboot that you've ever done, and it's over. It's, it's all in the background. The, the system is not constantly barraging me with pop-ups and demands saying, okay, finish what you're doing because we're going to update. That has never happened with Linux. So honestly, that really ties into reason number two. Uh, the fact that Linux is built for you. What do I mean by that? Windows is not built for you, right? 
Windows, the customers that Windows serves are advertisers and Microsoft itself. Uh, the entire point of Windows is to collect as much of your information as possible, and we'll talk about m more about that in just a moment. But the point of Windows is to get ads in front of you. There's ads in the first party apps, there's ads in the start menu, there's ads in the widgets box, there's ads in the fucking setup program. Like when you're setting up Windows for the first time, it shows you at least four ads. <laughs> Windows is not made for you to have a good experience using your computer. Windows is made to put ads in front of you. The advertisers are the customer. What's different is that with Linux, you are the person that it's made for. The Linux desktop operating system distributions are made for the person using them. And that really permeates every aspect of the system. It's made for you to have a good experience using it. Unlike Windows, which is made for the sake of the customer, which is advertisers, not you. Reason number one. Top reason why you should consider using Linux instead of Windows. Privacy. Linux distributions, yes, they collect some telemetry data, but you can turn it off, and it asks you before it does it. Which is so different than what you get with Windows. With Windows, by default, it, it opts you into collecting optional telemetry data, in addition to required telemetry data, and which basically, I mean, it does a lot of stuff, but I'm going to give you a couple examples. One of the things it does is it uses a keylogger to improve your typing experience. Literally, the words you type on your keyboard are getting sent to Microsoft. And you can prove this by looking in the Diagnostic Data Viewer that's built into the Settings app, which is just insane. <laughs> yes, you can turn that off. You can. But then you're still having to send the required diagnostic data which happens to include a timeline of basically everything you've done on your computer. And guess what? That's not just getting sent to Microsoft. That's getting sent to Microsoft and their partners, which are a lot of companies. For example, Google is one of Microsoft's partners. If you look at the, if you run Wireshark, and you capture the traffic coming from a fresh Windows installation, you will see all kinds of information being sent to numerous third parties before you've even logged into the damn thing. Like, the fact of the matter, privacy is dead on Windows. It's been dead for years. And if you want to be able to go about your life without everything being tracked, Honestly, you're looking at Linux as your number one choice, and that is why you should consider using Linux instead of Windows. It's been a long time coming, but I finally feel that Linux is in such a place that it's good enough for the vast majority of people. And so there is a misconception that goes around. People say the average user can use Linux. There's no such thing as the average user. Everybody has some specialized task that they're trying to accomplish with their computer. But I do feel confident in saying that the majority of use cases for Linux are completely usable in 2025. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little video. I really appreciate you watching. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. If you liked this video, like the video. And if you have any questions or corrections for me, leave them in the comments down below. And thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate you taking time out of your day to listen to my rants. It means a lot to me. We're getting really close to 2,500 subscribers, which is a big deal to me. And how this is going to work, just to give you a little peek behind the scenes, I'm going to take all of the money that I earn through YouTube and we're donating it to open source projects. 
So by you watching my videos and sharing them with other people, you are directly contributing to open source projects. Uh, also, I've gotten a few offers for sponsorships. It's too early to talk about specifics right now, but the majority of the money that I earn through sponsorships is also going to be donated to open source projects. So if you want to support Linux, uh, when I start doing sponsorships, if you could click the link and check out the products, it's again, it's another way for you to support open source projects. It's important to me that I give back to the community that has given me a voice. And that's what this is. It's no secret that my Linux content does better than all of my other content. And the fact of the matter is, these amazing projects that are built for the good of humanity have given me a chance to express my thoughts and feelings to thousands of people. I have to give back. It's, there's no question. They've earned it. They deserve me giving back to them. But anyway, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.